Hello friends, in this video we make copper 2 citrate and demonstrate the pyrophoric metal copper. Copper 2 citrate, also known as coprocitrol, is an ionic compound of copper and citric acid. It exists in the green hemipentahydrate form and the sky blue anhydrous form. It is prepared very easily by the reaction of citric acid with copper carbonate or copper oxide or even copper hydroxide. Here we prepare it via the copper carbonate and citric acid. The copper carbonate was in turn produced by the reaction of copper 2 sulfate with sodium carbonate and these are the materials required for this synthesis. We start by weighing out all the reactants. First of all, I weigh out 10 gram of copper 2 sulfate pentahydrate. Always try using powdered copper 2 sulfate, otherwise you will have a very hard time to dissolve the larger crystals. I added the powdered copper 2 sulfate into a 250 ml beaker and then I added around 200 ml of distilled water to dissolve the copper 2 sulfate. If you still feel difficult to dissolve the compound even after pulverizing it, gently warm the solution to completely dissolve the compound. Here I have already weighed 10 grams of anhydrous sodium carbonate. Then I add minimum amount of water to just dissolve the compound completely. I added around 20 to 25 ml of distilled water and then with the help of a glass steering rod I mixed around the compound to dissolve it. I had to even gently warm the solution for complete dissolution. The next part of the reaction is going to be the messiest part. I need to mix both the copper 2 sulfate and sodium carbonate together. In anticipation of a vigorous reaction, I had to take the largest beaker I had and that was just a 500 ml beaker. On adding the sodium carbonate solution slowly, there was formation of some kind of precipitate within the beaker but the reaction seemed not to be too vigorous. So I was excited and I took the glass steering rod and started to mix around the compounds very well. What is happening here is sodium carbonate reacts with copper 2 sulfate forming the insoluble basic copper carbonate and sodium sulfate is formed as the byproduct. When I started to mix around with the glass steering rod as you can see that the reaction is getting out of control and lot of frothing is taking place. But Fortunately, nothing spilled out much and I was able to contain the reaction in that 500 milliliter beaker itself. After ensuring the completeness of the reaction, I transferred the copper carbonate onto two tissue papers and let it in the sunlight to dry. Next I had to make a solution of citric acid, for that I dissolved 10 grams of citric acid in minimum amount of distilled water. Then I started to add the copper to carbonate slowly with the help of a spatula. You can clearly make out the fissing when I add each scope of copper 2 carbonate. What is happening is copper 2 carbonate is reacting with the citric acid to produce copper 2 citrate and carbon dioxide gas is being released as that fissing. This is the reaction. Three molecules of copper 2 carbonate reacting with two molecules of citric acid to produce the copper 2 citrate. And the color of the copper 2 citrate is also blue to green in color so there won't be any color change that is so noticeable.
the presence of carbon dioxide gas can be easily tested by bringing a lighted splinter into the beaker which will be extinguished as carbon dioxide is not a supporter of combustion. Copper to citrate is actually fairly soluble in water forming a deep blue colored solution but when more and more of copper to carbonate was added and the concentration of copper to citrate formed was too much it crashed out of the solution as this bluish green precipitate. After ensuring the complete reaction, the copper to citrate was transferred into a tissue paper in order to dry it. And finally we have the dry product here and this is the hydrated form of copper 2 citrate. You can make it out by seeing the greenish tinge to the compound. Now let us test the pyrophoricity of the product. Some amount of copper 2 citrate was taken in a dry test tube. The mouth of the test tube was then closed with the help of a cotton wool. This was to prevent the reaction with air. The test tube was then heated red hot. You initially notice the color change from green to blue. The blue color is actually the anhydrous form of the copper to citrate. Further heating will produce a brown to black color and we should continue heating for few minutes after this color has been produced to ensure complete reaction. What is actually happening here is the copper to citrate is actually decomposing to form the copper metal. Actually the metallic copper is formed as fine powder in the test tube. And because we have the cotton wool on top it is not actually reacting with the oxygen and is present as such. Now what we do is we take the test tube from the heating source and then we remove the cotton wool and then throw the contents down to the floor. On throwing down the contents to the floor, you immediately see the particles glowing. What is happening here is the fine particles of copper is getting oxidized in the air to form copper oxide. And you can see on the ground that black powder is the copper oxide. I would like to take this opportunity to thank my Patreon supporters who have financially supported me so that I could get the materials required for doing all these experiments. Thank you so much for taking your time to watch this video. If you loved the contents of this video, do subscribe to the channel and hit on that bell button for notifications. You can also join my discord server, I will put the link to that in the description.